Various lobby groups take to the streets to protest a move by legislators to increase their send-off packs to 9 million shillings each. The same day, irate Kenyans express their anger in newspaper pages, radio programs and online blogs. The increase will cost the taxpayer 2 billion shillings and the protesters were asking President Moe Kibaki not to sign the bill into law. Tuesday evening, the president refuses to sign the bill. So, did the president make the decision based on his moral compass or did the protest work? KTN's Edith Kimani takes a look at the growing culture of actors activism in the country and the results, if any. Tuesday morning, a familiar chant echoed through the city of Nairobi. Several lobby groups had come together to hold a street protest on a burning issue. The attempt by members of parliament to secretly increase a controversial bonus. If you truly are the president of Kenya, of Kenya, stand up for your people, say enough. Perhaps feeling the pressure or sharing their view, the president heeded to public demands and sent the bill back to the legislators. Spurred by this success, the organizers of the protests say many more can be expected. As more groups turn to peaceful protests in Nairobi, there are proposals to limit all such events to designated zones like the capital's Uhuru Park. Police see them as disruptive events requiring more resources to manage than their worth. But do protests work? Mwalimu Mati, CEO of Mars Group, says yes. According to him, Tuesday's protests were effective but only because of a combination of factors. Mati believes that because the issue being opposed resonated with the general public, it attracted a multifaceted group of protesters and extensive media coverage, making it successful. However, not all protests have had this winning formula. Time and time again, Kenyans have taken to the streets and gone home empty-handed. The demonstration by parents against teachers on strike is the most recent example. Despite the protests, the teachers continued on with their strike for two more weeks. Another memorable protest, the sitting at the education ministry to protest corruption, dragged on for weeks without forcing the then minister's resignation. So what makes a protest work? Some of the more effective protests succeeded because of sustainability and visibility. The Saba Saba protests of 1990 come to mind. Despite multiple arrests and detentions, protesters sustained the momentum, in the end being rewarded with a repeal of Section 2A that ushered in multipartyism. Tuesday's protests may have influenced Kibaki's decision, but observers warn that unless those demonstrating have an issue close to the public's heart, then their chance will fizzle out and be forgotten. Social media, as we've learned from the Arab Spring and the ongoing Peremenda movement by doctors, is making it easier to organize protests. But the impetus needed to sustain successful street demonstrations, no doubt, comes from the people themselves. For KTN, I'm Edith Kimani.